Montenegro sure is a beautiful country. But which places to visit and which places to avoid as tourist traps? We'll get into it in this video. But before we do, if you enjoy your travel content told by an expat who has lived in India, China, US and Ukraine, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you know every time when I post authentic and honest travel content. But let's get back to our topic. You've probably done your research about Montenegro, you've probably seen one of the names that appear on the screen, some cities, some towns, some natural parks, and you want to visit everything. Now, my biggest problem with this sort of videos is that they tell you what to visit, but they don't tell you what not to visit. So you end up in the situation when you want to see everything, you uh, spend your time and your euros or whatever currency you're using in your country, and uh, sometimes you just don't have the best experience. Let's start with Budva, where I spent two months, almost two months, of my Montenegro stay. So I have to say from the beginning that I didn't enjoy Budva. I really, really tried to, but it's just not my city. And let me explain. So we stayed in the part where the locals live. The city by itself is not beautiful at all. There are just like buildings, old and new, some are in construction. Actually, there is a lot of construction going on. And that gives you the sense that the city is not built till the end, like it's not a good look. The architecture is lacking, the infrastructure is also lacking, and the thing that pissed me off is that a lot of cars actually park on the sidewalk, which forces us to go on the road to get anywhere. So no charm in the <laughs> local town, just stay in the touristic part of Budva. So the touristic part is actually pretty nice, especially if you want to go um, to the beach every day. That's, you know, one of the best cities. But if I compare Budva to other places, actually like it's lacking almost in all the way. So Budva does have a decent beach, you know, some rocks, some sand. But if I think about picturesque beaches, the ones in Budva don't come up to my mind. They're actually more beautiful places and I'll get into that later in the video. Budva has a nice old town, but it's not very lively. It's not very happening. And when I think about the Kotor old town, you know, I'd rather go there because it's much more beautiful, much more historic and just more charming. And Budva also has a promenade, which is okay. But if I want to really go on a nice promenade, I would go to Tivat. So if you want an alternative to the beaches in Budva, I actually recommend Sveti Stefan. I've been there two times, a 20 minute ride from Budva, and Sveti Stefan is so charming. It is so beautiful and those beaches are to die for. If you have seen them on the videos or photos, they are as beautiful as they say. A visit to Sveti Stefan is worth it in any case. The island is one of the most beautiful attractions of the country and, you know, swimming there, is, it just feels magical. Um, the most beautiful viewpoint of Sveti Stefan is actually from the top. There is a really nice cafe there, you can get lunch or maybe a coffee and look over to the island. The island, unfortunately, is only open to hotel guests and a stay per night for one guest is like 1,600 euros, so I'm pretty sure it will be out of pocket for a lot of people. Around the beach, however, you can find great and inexpensive accommodations and some of the most beautiful views of Sveti Stefan. Also, near the beach, there is a small walk uphill into a forest of pines, which I recommend taking, and it takes you down to another beach, like the third beach that a lot of people skip. That one is really charming also. Then there is Kotor. Actually, I've been to Kotor um, three times, I think, and I really love the city. It's just beautiful, it's historic, it's charming weather wise because it's in a fjord the weather there is much cooler during the summer than in Budva but that comes also with less light and also with a lack of beach so if those are things that are important to you probably Kotor will not be a good fit for you. Kotor is a historic city and it has um, been built in the 12th I think 14th century it's super old it's super beautiful very charming um, but it has a slightly different problem because uh, Kotor is a UNESCO protected um, uh, place, site. It's very popular with tourists and when the people come to visit the city, it gets very crowded very fast. So if you want to explore the city, if you want to have some time for yourself, definitely do it in the morning or in the evening. Also, Kotor offers a couple of um, tracking uh, options, which I really enjoy. <laughs> they were a little bit complicated for me, but we actually did a tracking trip outside of the city and it was amazing. Both the views, 
uh, when we were going up the hill as well as the nature there. I really, really loved it. If you go to Kotor, obviously you'll see the amazing Boca Bay, but the question is whether it's worth taking a boat tour of the Boca Bay. And my answer is yes, if you make it short. We actually did um, half a day or almost a full day tour where we went all the way from Kotor to the Blue Cave with a couple of stops. So we swam, then we went back, then went back to Tiva, then Our Lady of the Rocks, and then in the evening, in the afternoon, we were back in Kotor. And it was a very long, very exhausting, and not a very interesting tour. So what I would recommend is actually just taking a short version where you go to Our Lady of the Rocks. You can spend maybe 30, 40 minutes on the island. The biggest asset of the island is how it looks. There is a small museum inside of the church, but I didn't find that to be super interesting, going back to the point that the museums in um, Montenegro are very small and not as interesting as in other countries, so don't expect too much and uh, maybe then go to Perast, which is, you know, a very close distance from there, spend, you know, an hour there exploring the city and go back to Kotor. If you end up taking this long tour, you will see a lot of sea, <laughs> like a lot of trees, a lot of small towns, and after some time, it does get really boring. Um, also, the Blue Cape did not produce any impression on me. Obviously, I was not swimming, but it is only blue when the weather is good. If the weather is not good, it's just like a gray cave. So what happens, you go there and for 15 minutes you swim from one end to the other and then the boat picks you up and that's it. Uh, I wouldn't call it especially <laughs> exciting and maybe at times a bit scary because like you're pretty much in the open there, obviously with a tour guide, but yeah. The city, however, that was closest to my heart was Tivat. You know, I am a sucker for beautiful things and I think Tivat's um, city center, the promenade, the marina are just exceptional. They are very, very polished, they are very nice. It's just a pleasure to walk there. I don't know why not more cities in Montenegro look like this. Whether you're looking for luxury, exciting outdoor activities or just to lounge on the beach, Tivat basically offers it all. Um, you simply cannot go to Tivat without visiting the marina and it is very sexy. It's a lively area full of charm, super yachts, fancy hotels, boutiques to galleries. Um, my favorite thing to do is to gawk at the super yachts that are docked in the marina and you know, just think who might be living there. Tivat also faces the open sea. It doesn't have any uh, medieval monuments, so it's super modern. But instead, you'll find upscale restaurants, coffee shops, and amazing sunsets. And actually, one of the best coffee shops that I found in Montenegro was here in uh, Tibet. Tibet is all about sitting back and uh, relaxing. Now, if you think about beaches compared to other parts of uh, um, the country, it has more rocky beaches. So definitely get something like a blanket to sit there because they're not as comfortable. Now let's go to the capital city, Podgorica. For such a beautiful country, Montenegro sure has an ugly capital. I spent there three days uh, since I was waiting for my Airbnb in Budva. And let me tell you, this place is boring and this place is ugly and soulless. Like there is no better way to put it. And I'm, I'm sorry for all the people that I might offend with this. We were living straight in the city center and I've never seen such a boring place where nothing ever happens. And you rarely see people on the street, like even in the evening where you would think that all the people would come out, you know, I don't know, party, go to restaurants, cafes. There are only a couple of people here and there. Also, the city is very spread out geographically, which is strange for a city with such a small population. It gets super hot in the summer, like scorching hot, which makes it's impossible to spot any people during the day, then for some reason any people during the night, you're walking, walking, walking. It's not particularly beautiful and it's kind of boring, just not a good experience. The only redeeming quality of the city is the fact that it does have an airport, <laughs> so it's easier to get there. And also it has more options for international cuisine, which you might not find in coastal cities like um, probably Budva is not very good at it. 
that's it. But trust me, you want to spend the least amount possible of time in this place because like it's not a good place. Now let's talk about Cetinje. Cetinje is the former royal capital of Montenegro and right now it is uh, the location of several national institutions including the official residence of the president of Montenegro. Summer temperatures in Cetinje are probably one of the most pleasant things because it doesn't get as hot as Podgorica or as the coastal cities. At the same time, it does have a very provincial feel. We were there on the Independence Day and there were a lot of people and it was really happening, but I would think that this is rather an exception than the rule. Um, I would go there for maybe a brunch with friends, you know, to relax for half a day, but I can't imagine myself living there because it doesn't seem very exciting. Also, Cetinje has a pretty big concentration of museums that people like to go to, but I think it's fair to say that Montenegro is a very small country, so um, the museums will be nowhere near as the one that you see in France, Spain, or, or Italy, so I would personally skip them. I don't think they are that interesting but obviously it's up to you and I think the prices are very reasonable but that being said I would not stop longer than maybe like half a day to one day in Cetinje if you have some extra time. Next one is Skadar Lake. I know that that one is not as popular and I think it has some justice to it because not everybody is fascinated by lakes but there are basically two ways of exploring it. One, going into the natural reservation, so basically seeing the big lake itself. And the second one is actually going on the river that ends up in the lake. And we did the second one, which arguably is more interesting than just going on the lake because the lake is pretty big, pretty wide, like a sea. And you end up not seeing a lot of action going on there. Um, also, depending on the season, the lake might be a little bit dried up, so it resembles more of a swamp than what you would think a lake would look like. We ended up going to the Chernohevich uh, River Village, which is a fisherman's village. We had lunch there, an uh, absolutely delicious lunch of trout. The prices were amazing, so that is a good spot to uh, stop and to eat something. And from there, on a boat, we started making our way through the Chernohevich River um, to, to the lake. Obviously, we didn't reach the lake. We were maybe one hour in one direction. And I would say like being two hours on the river was enough for me. Like I didn't want to see any more water, any more plants, uh, birds or water lilies. So uh, again, make it short and sweet. Believe me, you'll get bored really fast. Lofton Natural Park is not as big as Skyler Lake or Dormitor, but I think it offers the best balance in terms of sites, nature and history. You can get all of them by visiting this park. We had the big luck of going there on Montenegro's Independence Day, so we saw a lot of people in national attire, in the national colors of Montenegro with the flag. That was quite a sight. Lovchen National Park um, and the monument that stands on the top is dedicated to uh, the greatest ruler of Montenegro, which ruled in the 19th century and is credited with uniting Montenegro's tribes in modernizing the country. Uh, Negros was considered um, one of the best uh, poets of his time. He was also a philosopher, a politics man, a figure that is very close to Montenegrins. Negros' mausoleum in Lovchen National Park is one of the most popular attractions in Montenegro and I think it is must-see because it really helps you understand the people. Besides the mausoleum, there's a really nice um, viewpoint there that gives you an amazing view of the whole country. It, it is very unique and very picturesque, so I would definitely say go there. Especially that on the way to the uh, Lovchen National Park, you will have to go on a serpentine road that offers you really good views of Kotor and of Boca Bay. And from there, you can also stop at one of the restaurants, local restaurants, to eat some local um, uh, prosciutto, some cheeses, some bread, something like that. Please be aware that the cuisine is really simple, so don't expect Italian quality of prosciutto, but I think it makes for a really nice, authentic experience. I am truly impressed how so much beauty can be packed in such a small place, whether it's canyons, rivers, lakes, forests, mountaintops. It is just breathtaking. And if you have to visit just one thing in Montenegro, I recommend that is Dormitor. Now let me actually take you along the journey of the different things that we saw in the park. 
To get into the park, most people drive along the Tyra River. We started somewhere from um, the Bistritsa River that is an affluent of Tara. It's a really tumultuous, uh, uh, really fast river. And then as we were driving along the Tara River, it took us maybe an hour or even less because there was no traffic. It was the beginning of the touristic season. But it might take you a little bit more because I do recommend stopping at every corner, taking lots of photos and admiring the view because it is so amazing. At the end of the Tara River road towards um, uh, Durmitor, there is the amazing Tara Bridge, which offers zip lining. Unfortunately, I didn't take the opportunity, but it was so beautiful. The views are just amazing. Tara Canyon is the second deepest canyon after the Grand Canyon, so it's really one in a lifetime opportunity to see something that the second thing on our list was obviously going to the famous Black Lake. It is the largest lake in the Durmitor Natural Reserve. It is surrounded by this beautiful pine trees forest and it took us over an hour, I think an hour and a half to do a complete tour of the lake. It was a little bit challenging because there are a couple of rivers and cascades that go into the lake which make it a bit difficult to, to cross. So I would not recommend this track to small children or maybe if you don't have the proper shoes or maybe you're not very sporty. August is the month that is considered the perfect time to, to swim there. Uh, we just looked at the lake and it's just so different from every single angle. It, it, it doesn't look very black to be honest, but it is as charming as a lake can be. And finally, arguably the most beautiful part of the Dormitor National Park for me was the Highlands. We were driving for there. I know that a lot of people do a hike. We were not as prepared to do that. We were just driving and it was just impressive. We went along to the highest point, which is called Bobotov Hook. Uh, stopped there, but also stopped along the way to admire the mountains, the views. There were shepherds with their goats or sheep going to different places, there were cows. It is such a beautiful place. I'll, I will definitely put it in the video, but you have to come here. It's just this sense of freedom that you get when you come here that is unparalleled. I would only imagine how beautiful it is to hike here. Well guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're planning a trip to Montenegro, let me know what are the top destinations you would want to go and what are some places that you want to skip after watching this video. And if you've already been to Montenegro, please let us know, everybody, what were some of the disappointing things that you did here that actually you thought they would be better, but they ended up being kind of meh. I think it's much better when we share this kind of knowledge and that can make an impact on how we plan our trips and how much pleasure and good memories we can make from a place. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget subscribing and hitting the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!